Good morning, my friends, and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. Welcome to our celebration today. Today, December 3rd, we celebrate the memorial of St. Francis Xavier. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell you, I will tell of your name to my kin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear friends, we are gathered today to celebrate this Eucharist. We call to mind our sins and failures, and we ask the Lord to grant us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the preaching of St. Francis Xavier won many peoples to yourself, grant that the hearts of the faithful may burn with the same zeal for the faith, and that Holy Church may everywhere rejoice in an abundance of offspring. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, they will sing this song in the land of Judah. A strong city have we. He sets up walls and ramparts to protect us. Open up the gates to let in a nation that is just, one that keeps faith, a nation of firm purpose you keep in peace, in peace for its trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. He humbles those in high places, and the lofty city he brings down. He tumbles it to the ground, levels it with the dust. It is trampled underfoot by the needy, by the footsteps of the poor. The word of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This gate is the Lord's. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call him while he is near. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only, not the, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them 
will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who listens to this word will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. Dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Undeniably, this pandemic has challenged us in so many ways, many if not all, Find our, found, have found ourselves so distraught by it. Many of us have been shaken to the core. Many of us have been severely blown by it. But surprisingly, instead of turning to the Lord and finding ways to strengthen our faith, some have failed to invest in their prayer lives and in their relationship with God. Some have not taken this past 10 months to read the Bible the entire Bible, or at least parts of it. Some have failed to watch Masses online, or at least listen to Catholic resources out there. Some have failed to pray more, to learn more, to grab the chance to grow in the faith. But we know so well that what can make us get through this is our faith in God, our relationship in Him, with Him. And we find that imagery in our Gospel today. A wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. Faith is the foundation of a person who can weather every storm in life. Relationship with God is the strong rock foundation of a person who can overcome all challenges and difficulties. But the question is, how do we make our faith in God as strong as rock? Our gospel today provides the answer. Everyone who listens to these words of mine, Jesus demands that men should listen, that we should listen to his voice. Through prayer, through scriptures, through the homily of the priest, through the sharings and reflections of others, through our daily experiences, every day, God presents us so many opportunities to listen to his voice. But then Jesus continues, everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them. Jesus demands that we do not only listen, but we act on his words. Knowledge only becomes relevant when it is translated into action. Knowledge must become action. Theory must become practice. Theology must become life. There is little point in going to a doctor when we listen to what the doctor says, yet we do not do what the doctor tells us to do. There is little point in going to an expert when we listen to his or her advice, but we do not live the wisdom and advice in our day-to-day -day practice. And there is little point in coming to Jesus when we listen to his words, but do not act on them. If we are to be in any sense followers of Jesus, we must hear and do what he tells us. If we are to build a strong foundation, we must hear and act on his words. If there is any word in which hearing and acting are summed up, that word would be obedience. From ob audere, which means to listen and to carry out the command. Jesus demands our obedience because our salvation depends on this. Some time ago, there was a report of the case of a sailor in the Royal Navy who was severely punished for a breach of discipline. So severe was the punishment that in certain civilian quarters, it was thought to be far too severe. A newspaper then asked its readers to express their opinion about the severity of the punishment. One who answered was a man who himself had served four years in the Royal Navy. In his view, the punishment was not too severe. He held that discipline was absolutely essential, for on such obedience 
a man's life might well depend. He cited a case from his own experience. He was in a launch which was towing a much heavier vessel in a rough sea. The vessel was attached to the launch by a wire hawser. Suddenly, in the midst of the wind and the spray, and the spray there came a single, insistent word of command from the officer in charge of the launch. Down, he shouted. On the spot, the crew of the launch flung themselves down. And just at that moment, the wire towing hawser snapped and the broken parts of it whipped about like a maddened steel snake. If any man had been struck by it, he would have been instantly killed. But the whole crew automatically obeyed and no one was injured. Friends, obedience saves lives. Our salvation depends on our obedience to God. Amen. On this memorial of St. Francis Xavier, we may be converted and that we may, we may learn obedience to prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord. That the Lord's house may be established on the highest peak and all nations stream toward him for instruction and counsel. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to keep our souls in silence and vigilance, alert to the many small arrivals of the Lord that come through events and circumstances, and through those we love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose advent is full of pain, illness, loneliness, hunger, and poverty, that we may be willing to reach out to them and assist them in their every need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, those who have passed from COVID and from other illnesses, may they enjoy everlasting peace in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, my friends, in the silence of our hearts, we offer to the Lord all our prayers and petitions. God, Father of heaven and earth, you hold the centuries in your hand. Free us from the darkness of sin and lead us into the light of your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread. We offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept his sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, these offerings we bring you in commemoration of St. Francis' Savior, and grant that as he journeyed the distant lands out of longing for the salvation of souls, so we too, bearing effective witness of the gospel, may with our brothers and sisters eagerly hasten towards you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. Francis Xavier, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, Alberto, our Coadjutor Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints, in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May your mysteries, O God, kindle in us that fire of charity with which St. Francis Xavier burned for the salvation of souls, so that walking ever more worthily in our vocation, we may obtain with him the reward you promise to those who labor well in your harvest through Christ our Lord. Friends, thank you very much for joining us in this celebration. Please continue checking our website, sptacc.org, for updated information on our parish life. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you and your loved ones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Now go, proclaim your faith to the world. Thanks be to God.